Hey everyone, welcome to our next video and today we are going to discuss about the calculation of isoelectric point from the values of the dissociation constant pKa. So that is going to be our video, we will see how we can get the values from titration curves and to calculate the pI. So let's get into it. In order to understand how to calculate the PI, we must first understand what is PI. Now, isoelectric point or PI is the pH at which an amino acid will remain neutral. It will not have any charge with it. For example, whatever amino acid structures we have studied till now, some are negatively charged, some are positively charged and the others are neutral. So we want that neutrality to be in them. So at what pH they have that neutrality is going to give us the PI. Okay. And pKa is the dissociation constant. So by in, in layman's term, if, I, if you want to understand what is pKa, it is the pH at which a compound either gains a proton or loses a proton. So it depends on the situation like if you are increasing the pH it will start to lose protons. So at what point while you are increasing the pH it loses its proton is going to be its pKa value or if you go in the reverse direction like you are coming from a higher pH to a lower pH that means the compound will be gaining electrons. So at what pH it starts to gain electron that point is going to be the pKa. Okay. So in order to understand that let us take one example. One simple example of alanine. Now, this is the structure of alanine. At this structure, this one is positive, this one is negative. So, cancel each other out to have neutral charge. The charge here, net charge here is 0. Now, what if I decrease the pH? If I decrease the pH, that means I am putting in more hydrogen ions in the solution. At that time, what will happen? This carboxyl group will become C double O H because it will accept one proton. It will act as the proton acceptor. And this one will stay the same as NH3 plus hydrogen will stay as hydrogen and CH3 will be CH3. So in this case, it will become only one positive charge will be there this NH3 plus and we have one CH3. So when I have decreased the pH, what has happened is we have lost that negative charge. So now the net charge is plus one. Now if I increase the pH, what happens here is this C double O, we have H and we have NH3 plus. But since I have increasing the pH, it will start to lose electrons because there are going to be more concentration of hydroxide ions in the solution. So the amino acid will lose the extra hydrogen present in it. So it will lose the proton. So it will become NH2 with no charge and here the CH2 will be present. As a result, this becomes minus one charge. So at one point, we are going to increase the pH and have negative charge. If I decrease the pH, I have a positive charge and at some pH the charge is 0. So I want to find out what is that charge. So if you are given the values of pKa, so we are going to have one pKa value here, one pKa value here that is suppose pK1 and suppose this is pK2. So pK1 will be the pH at which it starts a gaining electron or proton, not electron, proton and pK2 will be the pH at which it loses the proton and at exactly at the middle of these two we have our zero charge. So if I can find the average of pK1 and pK2 then I will get the pH at which this whole thing exists in neutral charge that is no charge at all. So pKa value and the pH value are the same. pKa is equivalent to pH. So if I can find the average of pKa, pK1, pK2 where the charge is minus 1 and min plus 1 and minus 1. If I can find the average between plus 1 and minus 1, I will obviously get 0. So I can find the average of pK1 and pK2 to get the pH at which this compound is staying at neutral charge. And neutral charge, the pH at which a compound stays in neutral charge is called the isoelectric point or pI. So, if I have to write the formula for pi, pi will be equal to the average of pK1 
and pk2 i hope that is clear between minus 1 and plus 1 lies 0 so i can find the average of pk1 and pk2 to get a value of 2 now if i have to put the values suppose for alanine the pk1 value and pk2 values are given in that case what will you do suppose the p the value for pk1 for alanine is 2.34 and the value of pk2 for alanine is 9.7 so this is the ph at which it will start gaining electron and this is a uh, proton and this is the ph at which it will start losing the proton so therefore the pi that is the pH at which it will neither gain nor lose and it will stay neutral is the average of pk1 and pk2. So for pk1 we have 2.34 and pk2 is 9.7 by 2. So what we get is 12.04 by 2 which is equal to 6.02 so 6.02 is the ph at which alanine will stay neutral so this is the ph at which it starts gaining electron this is the ph at which it starts losing the proton not electron proton i am repeating proton and electron all through the video i am sorry for that so pk1 is the ph at which it will start gaining proton and pk2 is the value at which or the pH at which it will start losing the proton and this value 6.02 is the pH at which alanine will stay in neutral charge so this is the pi of alanine now this was simple because alanine in physiological pH stays at uh, neutral charge but there are some amino acids which do not stay at neutral charge at the physiological pH for example the acidic amino acids or the basic amino acids that we have studied from the charged polar amino acids if you remember we have three amino acids which always stay as positively charged and there are two amino acids which always stay as negatively charged so let us take the examples of one of each, each of these and try to see how to find out the pi of those amino acids which stay at, physio at, at physiological pH they stay as charged amino acids so let's look at those so this is where we are trying to find out the pi of glutamate now glutamate in physiological ph stays at as a negatively charged amino acid so this is the structure of glutamate at physiological ph okay so physiological ph since its charge is negative what will be its charge we have two negative and one positive so its net charge will be minus one if I increase the pH further, this plus or this proton here extra hydrogen atom will be released and as a result we will have a charge of minus 2 here. From here, if I try to decrease the pH, I will have one pKr. pKr means the pH at which or the dissociation constant of the R group. This is the R group and the pKr is the dissociation constant of the R group that means at this pH it will either lose the proton or it will gain the proton depends on which side you are trying to move okay so here if I go from right to left here at this pH at 4.25 pH it is the dissociation constant of the R group so it will gain the proton as a result what will be the charge I will have plus minus zero charge neutral but this is not what happens at physiological pH. At normal pH, your body stays in this form. Okay. If we further decrease the pH, since we have two more charges left and one hydrogen acceptor is still there. If I still decrease the pH, here I have CWH where it has gained the electron. And here we already have CWH, so no charge. Only one positive charge, so its charge will be plus one net charge. Now I said that it should be the average of the pk values now which values should I select or should I select all the three I have three values here pk1 pkr and pk2 now you should remember that we are trying to find the average of the pH so that we get the pH at which the charge is zero so if I try to find out the average of minus one zero minus plus one zero minus one and minus two I will not be getting zero I will be getting 1 plus 0 minus 1 minus 2 by 2 which is going to be minus 2 by 2 that is minus 1. 
this is not what I want. I want the charge to be zero. And in order to get the charge as zero, I must find the average between this value and this value. That means I should select PK1 and PKR to get the isoelectric point of glutamate, to get the PI of glutamate. Always remember, whenever you are trying to find out the PI value, you must consider the two PK values where one is minus one, the other is minus one, the other is plus one, and at the center we have zero. We should not consider any other values where zero is not at the center because my ultimate aim is to find the pH at which the compound remains at zero charge. Zero charge is the most important. Okay. So now we will take the average of pK1 and pKr. So if I have to find out the pI of glutamate, so pI of glutamate will be pk1 plus pkr by 2 so pk1 is 2.19 plus 4.25 by 2 so let us calculate this 14 1 4 and i have 6 by 2 so it should be 3.22 so at pH 3.22, glutamate will stay as a neutral atom or neutral compound. I hope that's clear. At 3.22 pH, which is the isoelectric point, glutamate will stay as a neutral compound. It will not be carrying any net charge. These are all the net charges. Okay. So this is how you find the pH or sorry pi of any amino acid when the pk values are given you must have the dissociation constant values if you don't have them then it will not be easy for you to understand this uh, to get the values okay so we need the pk values to find the pi and from this equation also we can have others suppose you are given the pi you are given pk1 you are asked to find the pkr then first you understand which values you should take and uh, then you can automatically find the answer okay so now suppose you want to find out the pi of an amino acid and you are given the different values of pka but you have forgotten the structure of the amino acid now that may happen at certain situations where the structure of amino acid is a bit difficult and you forgot and now you have to find out the pi so how to do it without the structure so here i have taken one example of histidine i have the pk1 pkr and pk2 values and histidine as we all know it is always uh, it stays at positively uh, as a positively charged uh, amino acid at physiological pH. Now, what do we do in this case? Now, at physiological pH, histidine will have plus one charge. That is known to us. Now, if I since it is already positively charged at physiological pH, if I decrease the pH, then what will I get? If I decrease the pH, the charge will become even more positive. So, plus two. Because I am adding more protons to the solution with decreasing pH. If I increase the pH, that is, I am removing the hydrogen ions, or maybe I am adding more hydroxide, I will reach zero. And we can have more removed, more hydrogen ions removed if we increase the pH even more. So we get to minus one charge. Okay, so these are the probable values that we have. Now we are given the X2 extremes, pk1 where the least pH, so I will put this one here where pk1 will be equal to 1.82 and this one will be the pk2 which is equal to 9.17 and here I will have the pkr which is 6.00. Now I have to find out the pi and as I said the pi must be between the plus 1 and minus 1 charge. So plus 1 here, minus 1 here, I will consider pkr and pk2. Very simple. So you take pkr, you add it with pk2 and you divide it by 2. So you get 6 plus 9.17 by 2 which is 15.17 by 2. So it is 7.5 is 7, 11, 5, or 8, and then again 5. So 7.585. That is the pH at which histidine will have neutral charge. So this is the pi of histidine. I hope you understood this part. This is the at physiological pH. If I decrease the pH from this, since it is the physiological pH means it has a plus charge. So it will be having 1 as C double O minus 
one is the NH3 plus and another positive charge is there. So we have one for the C double O minus and one for the NH3 plus. These are there. These two are there for sure. And we have one in the R group where R is having a positive charge. So what we are doing here is we are telling that I want to increase the pH. So I will add more protons. So as a result, what will happen? It will become plus two charge. Here it was 0 and 1. So it is, uh, I mean 0 means plus 1, minus 1, 0 and 1. So we get plus 1 charge, which is this one. Now if I increase the pH, this becomes C double O H. Ultimately, 2 positive charge. So positive. Now if I, from this point, which was this, for plus 1, if I keep on increasing the pH, that is I am adding or trying to take away the H plus, then this will be removed. So we will have 0 charge. And again, this will be removed. This hydrogen will be removed to get minus 1 charge. This minus 1 charge. So that is how you can get. You put one R in place of that whatever R group it is. You put R and you give the charge. If it is negatively charged, put minus. And you see what happens when you take give hydrogen or take away hydrogen. If it is positively charged, then put plus and see what happens taken away or given back. If it is not charged, then it is very simple. You will be only given the pK1 and pK2 and you have to find out the value of the pI. So this is all about how to calculate the pi from pKa values and I hope it is clear to you. It is not that tough. Try to find out the minus 1 charge and the plus 1 charge and find the average of these two. The pKa values of these two and you will be easily able to find out the pi of the values. And if you don't know the structure, that is how you do it. So that's a trick from my side. If you have any other ideas, you can put it to use by yourself. So that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do subscribe to my channel if you want me to put out more videos like this and share it with your friends if you think they need it to. So thank you everyone. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Cheers.